And my daddy was always, man, you don't know what nobody's thinking, man. They may be thinking I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. I never presume to to know what any person thinks about right. about anything, right. because nobody knows what I'm thinking about stuff. <laughs> and that was. Right. And a lot of times you notice you have conversations. Somebody say, "I bet they were." I think they think, and I bet you they were. Man, you don't know what you they have think. No idea. You have no idea. You know. I think the thing I've been thinking about the most is a, is the, the need to create space, through humility. And through listening the need to create space. Like when you listen, you create space. And even if, 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 you're, if you're humble, you create space. So that's the thing I've been thinking about. How so, do you create more space? It's hard to create space. It's physically, mentally? It's hard in every way. That's why yoga is hard. That's why the deepest punishment in our culture is solitary confinement. <laughs> it's hard to just sit music when you play new orleans music other people are playing the whole time so the music is cacophonous it's a lot of clarinet plays with the trumpet and trombone plays with the with the trumpet three people are playing melody lines together you have to create even more space even though y'all are all playing together and you have to be able to hear them so you can play and still hear them space doesn't mean you're absolutely quiet it means you're listening and responding appropriately to the space that they're uh, playing in, you know, it's it's life is 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 much more difficult because there are many dynamics that were set in play before you came on the scene. You're born midstream. My great uncle had a funny saying. He said, "You didn't mess this up. You're not gonna fix it." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and when you're playing, you the, the life of the song is the duration of that experience. And it requires discipline, but it does not require the same discipline that life requires. In, in life, you're always in a circle, so you have a lot below you and a lot above you. You have a lot to the left, to the right, and all around you. And you can only perceive what you can. Most of it, you cannot. You can't perceive it. Right. So even if you're trying, you, you're going to be ignorant to most of what's going on. Right. <laughs> That's good. Acknowledging your ignorance is hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> thing that my daddy would do in the class he'd make four people stand back to back right in a room right and he would say describe what you see and then he'd tell other person describe what you see you just so of course you're describing different things four you're people at this you're describing that you're describing the wall the windows you see you're describing the clock you're describing the blackboard you describe a piano the bass and he would say now does the fact that y'all all see different things mean that we're not in the same room and we said, we in the same room. So does the fact that you don't see what he's seeing mean that he's wrong and you're right? Now think of all of what, n that the, the four of y'all, with your perspective, think of all in this room you still can't see. And that's how I want you to come to learn in this stuff that I'm teaching y'all. You don't know. And be open to many possibilities. Right. And there could be many possibilities, including the opposite to the one you believe, and y'all could both be true. No. Yes. No, I'd be right. You see that? There see? you go. That's why he taught I'd you that. I'd be right. That's why he, that's why he taught you that. <laughs> You're looking at the clock, but that's a window on the other side. 